Welcome back to the Holistic Health Bites podcast. Today, we're going to have a conversation around brain health and metabolic health and how the two are really interconnected. And I am joined by an expert in this field, Dr. Spencer Zimmerman, who is also the author of The Brain Reset. And he's going to share all of his insights about how these two fields really are very connected. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, me too. So let's just dive in. Do you want to give a little background on how you got into this and what interested you in this particular connection to begin with? Yeah, so I started off really in the world of brain health. It was my first passion and love when I was in school. Worked with a lot of people dealing with traumatic brain injuries, concussions, strokes, neurodevelopmental, right? Neurodegenerative conditions. And as my mentors would teach me, you know, they're like, well, it's cool that you like the brain, but do you understand what's going to ruin the brain, right? Because you may be the best brain rehab specialist in the world, but if you don't understand the thyroid or the how hormones would sabotage brain health, then yeah, you're in help people, but then you've got a whole nother set that you're either not going to help at all or else you're going to think you help and then they're going to tank and lose everything you thought you did. Wow. Wow. Okay. So this is going to be awesome because there's so many amazing connections that you just tipped on there. And I think we, we definitely need to talk about it because people, we like to blame our hormones for everything. And we like to blame aging on everything. And we like to just kind of pinpoint these big things that kind of feel like, well, I can't do anything about it anyway, but how do we know what's actually going on? If you feel like your brain just isn't working like it should, or maybe you have a brain injury or you know, whatever that is, if you think there might be something here, how, how do you figure that out? You know, the biggest thing, it really is an evaluation. That's like the most undervalued part in healthcare. Like, you know, we're in such a day and age of social media and Google and YouTube. Don't get me wrong, right? There's great information on there. And, and that's what we're trying to provide you today. But people find something and they latch on to it. But you don't latch onto what your auto mechanic tells you until they've actually looked. They're like, well, I mean, it could be that. That's what it sounds like. But it's not till they really investigate, do they give you an answer? So that's kind of the big thing that I want you to think about. And then we can give you a framework to think because, hey, whenever I say these symptoms, what do you think about? And fatigue, brain fog, word finding, motivation, sleep issues, focus, concentration. What do you think about? I yeah. guarantee you, we all go to our bias. We all go to our bias, right? Providers go to their bias. You go to your bias as a patient based upon other providers you've seen, friends you've talked to, things you've read online. And what I want to help you do is to pull away from that bias and to be open. Cause like you said, hormones get blamed on everything. I see so many people who get over medicated on thyroid hormone, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, because they're compensating for something else that they just haven't discovered yet. Yeah. Just masking the symptoms with some either pharmaceutical or supplement or, you know, some kind of band aid, and not actually addressing the real problem. Correct. So do you see some common things that are actually what's really going on? Are there some like, most of the time, it's one of these five things? Is there anything kind of commonality wise that's really behind it? Man, that's hard because <laughs> right, we can go super generic, right? And super generic would be is, hey, mitochondrial or immune system mediated, right? Between mitochondria and the immune system, you've pretty much found the issue with everything. And now you have to say, well, what's causing it? You know, like, well, what's causing mitochondrial issues or what's causing immune issues? So let's use the brain as an example, right? Let's say you've got those issues. Could it be from an old concussion? Yes. When we look at the research, a year down the road, over half of people diagnosed in an ER setting are still not recovered, which is way more than people thought, right? People are like, oh, maybe it's like 5%. And even then it gets blamed on depression. 
So yeah, it could be that, right? But could it be anemia? I mean, the amount of people who come in who aren't even checked for anemia is like mind boggling. Could you have autoimmunity, right? Could you have mold issues like mold, right? It's becoming very trendy. And now everyone's like, oh, I, I got mold. And it's like, no, like, don't get me wrong. People absolutely do have mold. I've got patients with mold. But you've got to go through the proper workup and not chase symptoms. Because when you chase symptoms, yeah, you may get a little bit better when you're throwing stuff at it. But you're not as specific as you need to be. And if you want lasting results, you really have to go for the underlying process. Because when you do that, that's where you're like, cool, I'm not going to be frustrated. If not, it's like when you make these dietary changes and you're like, oh, that was a fad, right? That was my health fad for the month. Yeah, you got some results, but then how quickly did it fade? Of course, through all of this, we all also need to be doing the foundations. We need to be eating a quality diet. We need to be sleeping. We need to be managing our stress. We need to be drinking enough water. We need to be moving our bodies. Like these are the foundational things that everybody needs to do that I would probably start there. I would start with the foundations. And then from there, anything remaining, then absolutely. We need the deeper dive to figure out why is this still happening? Why is your body still not functioning the way it should? So from kind of that perspective, do you see some common mistakes people are making, things that either they think they're doing correctly that really they're not, or that they just don't even know they should be doing? Yeah. I mean, like you said, it all starts with the foundational stuff, like do the foundational stuff, how you eat, sleep, stress, exercise, socialize, get those five good. And then say, what else do you need to be doing? Right. Our whole model, whether it's a lot of functional medicine and traditional medicine, it's all about like, oh, well, that's okay. You know, we're going to tell you a little bit about nutrition, but we're not going to hold you firm on that. We're fine giving you stuff to make up for what you won't do. And it's like, no, like double down on doing it right. And then let's look, what are things I commonly see, right? So let's go with fatigue. Well, unhealthy brain is a really big one, probably a third, maybe it's because of the patients I see, but a third of the patients I see who come in, who do not know they have concussions or anything like that, will have an unhealthy brain causing their chronic fatigue. Another third, it's going to be some sort of autoimmunity. And then another third, it's usually a blend, but you throw in some immune stuff, right? Maybe it's anemia. Maybe there's other things like that. Just even nutrition choices, right? Like, like even, are you getting your nutrition right when you're eating? Are you getting your sleep? I mean, how many people are like, well, I mean, I know my sleep could be better, They'll say that. And then you're like, well, maybe that's why you're fatigued. Oh, no, no, it couldn't be that. Yeah, it sometimes it's so obvious to the outsider looking in. That it's like, well, hello, you can't just sleep four hours a night and expect to feel amazing. And yet we all have our own blind spots to our own habits. And we're like, no, but it's always been that way. And this is a new problem. And we make excuses for why that can't possibly be the thing. And it's not me. It's some underlying imbalance that I'm not in control over. And a lot of times we are actually in control of the things that are causing our problems. And so, yeah, we just need to be really honest with ourselves and do the things, actually do them. Correct. And, and I'd say, you know, what you just said there is that's going to be the issue for 25, 50% of people is just being honest with yourself and doing what you know you should do. Because if you do it, then that's where a provider can do a lot more with you. And a lot of people are always, oh, but you know, this costs a lot of money. It's like, well, yeah, if you come in having already done the foundational stuff, we wouldn't have to start there. We could come from a further place, but we, we have to build you up from ground zero and 50 years of bad habits that you still don't want to let go of. You're right. It is going to be harder and it's going to cost more. So yep. that's a choice you're making. Yeah. So let's turn a little bit to the metabolic health side of things. How does blood sugar dysregulation, you know, diabetes, all of the metabolic health stuff, how does that correlate directly to brain health? And how does obviously brain health factor into metabolic health? 
When we talk about metabolic health, as you said, right, everyone goes to diabetes, they go to blood sugar, they go to insulin, thyroid, and stuff like that. Well, pretty much the first place that insulin impacts when you start getting insulin resistance, it is the brain because your brain is the most metabolically demanding organ you have, right? It only weighs a few pounds, but it uses 20, 25% of the entire body's energy supply, which is a lot. I mean, even when you're like, I'm zoned out and I wasn't doing anything, guess what? Your brain was still burning through a lot of energy. And that's why when people have insulin resistance, right? Or let's say you eat, you get too much carbs, you get tired. What happens to your brain? Focus, concentration, memory, word finding, all of that starts showing up because those are the parts of the brain. And with insulin, insulin is a signaling molecule in the brain. It's not so much about using sugar. It's more about synaptogenesis, which is connections with the brain, promoting plasticity, the ability to connect and change connections based upon stimulation. And that's one of the reasons why, as we look at those who are diabetic, how many of them, when they're diabetic long-term, have good brain health? There's not many. It eats their brain. And that's also why a lot of researchers, they'll call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes. So that's one whole side. But we have to remember, bi-directional axis. So everyone's talking about the gut-brain axis as if it's the gut that controls the brain and the brain doesn't do anything to the gut. But when the brain's not as healthy, that's where all your signaling stuff is released for satiety, ghrelin, and, and all that. So that fires down and says, hey, right, through the vagus nerve and other stuff, let's have proper stomach acid. Let's release digestive enzymes. Let's activate digestive enzymes. Let's make sure we produce anti-inflammatory byproducts from the spleen. Let's make sure we maintain intestinal lining. Let's make sure we've got the right motility, you know? And guess what? If you don't have that and you don't break down your food in the way you should, guess what? That's also impacts metabolism and creates stuff. So it's, and there's even new research the past few years that's looking at diabetes and some of the researchers, maybe it's because of where they've got their own bias, right? They're like type two diabetes is a neurological based issue versus just pancreatic. So yeah, it makes sense. The body is a complex ecosystem. We can't just fix one thing or address one thing and expect it to fix the whole body. There's so many interconnected systems. I mean, really everything in the body is connected to everything else in the body. So if you, it's like a spider web. If you pull on one little string of the web, the whole thing shifts a little bit. It's the same thing. We have to look at all of these systems. It may not just be the brain. It may not just be the pancreas. It may not just be the gut. It may not just be the, th the thyroid, but it might be all of those communications that just aren't working right. Absolutely. And so what I do with my patients, right, is I'm going to test their brain health, but I'm also going to run labs. And then I tell them it's not about what we find it, and that's it. It's about what is the order and sequence that we should address it. Because sometimes you get your labs done and you're like, oh, like, let's go there first. And it's like, I get it. You want to go there first, but there's other groundwork we have to do. It's just like building a house, right? No one wants to talk about the foundation, the framework. It's not, it's not sexy. It's not attractive. They want to talk about the granite, the countertops, all the fixtures. Everyone wants to go there. And it's the same thing with our health. But that's why you see a healthcare provider because your healthcare provider is the one to say, look, I get it. That's where you want to go. But we've walked this journey, right? Maybe they've done it for a few years, right? I've been doing this for a decade. Like, let us walk you down the path that's going to give you the results you ultimately want to help you prevent these frustrations because the body does connect. And maybe your provider doesn't do all of it, but they can say, hey, does this make sense? So a good example, when we were talking about thyroid and hormones being over-medicated. So free T3, depending on the labs, got a range of 2.5 to a 4.5. I even seen as high as six now. I'll get people who come in, their TSH is completely fine. It's like a two free T3 is like a 2.9 and 
you know, and their doc's like, well, you know, I, I think it's your thyroid. I'm like, I mean, how low is your energy? Right. You have to kind of look at that. Like if your thyroid's off 10%, but your energy is 50% of where it should be. Do you think that's enough to make up for it? Usually not. And I've seen people pushed free T3, right? Let's say the high end was a 4.5. I've seen them push up to a five, a six. I mean, like, is your energy better yet? Is it better yet? And they're like, no. And, and it's something I've told my patients routinely is, and as we've talked about, well, there's not just one thing. You know, it's, it's like we want to be told it's the one thing. We, we just want to be like, oh, it's just that magic thing. That's all it was. But the body works as a whole and we can have more than one thing wrong with us. And that can mean, hey, you may need a couple different providers who are connecting your puzzle and putting it together. And that's okay. And I think that's a big thing we see in especially the natural healthcare space. There's a lot of providers that don't want to work with each other, right? They're afraid to refer. And it's like, well, why can't you shine in different areas? Like you don't see an athlete try to do everything on the team. They're like, no, here's where I'm great, right? They don't, they don't try to play all the positions. So find those that will work well together. So you get a cohesive team because that's where you get the answers the fastest and you're going to get the most long lasting results instead of being like, oh, I was with that provider for a year and a half. Now I'm with this provider and you get so burnt out and you start believing you can't get better. And is that really true? Or is it because you just didn't go down the right path? Yeah. Yeah. And it, might sound more complicated to work with multiple practitioners, but you're going to get the best of the best from each one. Instead of getting the best of this one category and okay in the rest, because that's really not what they specialize in, do you want the best of the best in all the ways? I mean, it really does take a complex system to address a complex problem like the human body is. And so, yeah, we need not a magic pill, not a magic practitioner. We need a comprehensive solution. And sometimes that does involve multiple different practitioners. And that doesn't always have to be medical practitioners. It could be personal trainers. It could be acupuncturists. Mm -hmm. It could be nutrition and doctor and chiropractor. And I mean, you have a doctor and a dentist. Why not have a couple different practitioners in your realm? And they're all going to give you their best care in their best way. Yep. And it's important, you know, it's, when we talk about this, so remember, it's in their way and it's based upon their training. Uh, nothing annoys me more than someone's like, I tell them I find all this stuff wrong. I'm like, perfect. I know what to do. And they're like, I'm going to ask my PCP who doesn't treat concussions at all if what you're doing is appropriate for me. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, but we just assume and I get it, right? Like my wife asks me stuff all the time. She's like, so with my eyes, because I mean, in LASIK, what about this? I'm like, look, I'm not the LASIK provider. Don't ask me, but there's that assumption we have. And I get it. We are all guilty of this. We want to put more on the provider that we see than sometimes they can actually handle. And because most providers really want to help you instead of telling you, I'm sorry, this is not a question for me. Most of them are going to give you their opinion, even when they probably shouldn't. Yeah, I think as a society, we've put a lot of our physicians on a pedestal and that's not fair to them. It's not fair to you to expect them to know everything. And it's not fair to them to be expected to know everything. There's a reason why we have all these different disciplines. That You wouldn't take a bicycle to a car mechanic. You know, I mean, we do have to go to the right specialist for the right thing. And I think we need to stop expecting any one practitioner to have expertise and ability in every arena. Correct. And that's why, you know, as we're talking about metabolism, like, right, we're talking about brain health because it's the most metabolically sensitive organ. And you've probably talked with others, right? Diabetes. We know there's a lot of heart disease and guess where you've got all these blood vessels in the brain. So if you have vascular health issues because of metabolic issues, it's going to hurt the brain. And that's why vascular dementia is the second leading cause of dementia. 
And it's only going up as our vascular health gets worse and worse and worse. But ultimately vascular health and metabolics, like it's pretty hard to separate it. Yeah, for sure. So what are some things that you often end up recommending for clients? Let's let's say brain injury. If somebody has a concussion or some kind of traumatic brain injury history, what would be some of the modalities that they might need to help their brain heal? Yep. So let's assume, right, your testing showed everything that we see with a lot of the injuries. One is we're going to do specific eye movement-based therapies. So and this also in the ways you know it's your brain. So let's say you're dealing with thyroid or you think it's hormones. You're like, oh, but I'm tired. If you're reading a book and you're getting tired after a few minutes, you're on the computer and you feel like you ran a race, you're driving and you get tired. And I'm not saying you're doing like a road trip. I'm saying you're driving 30 minutes and that's tiring you out. That's your brain. And so we use targeted eye movement therapies. We also do balance therapies. And a lot of people are like, oh, my balance is perfectly fine. Hey, Fine. Try this one foot in front of the other eyes open and eyes closed. Eyes closed is what matters most with a brain. Then you can also get right. If you're at the gym or something, you've got a pad like this, stand on it, feet fairly close to each other, eyes open, eyes closed. You should sway a little bit more with eyes closed compared to eyes open, but not a ton. But if you are that's an issue. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm not balance issues. I'm not tripping over stuff. I'm not running into the wall. But guess what? You've got to get it tested because if you don't, you don't really know where you're at. But that's also a good way to monitor your brain health as you age as well. So th those are two things. We do a lot of stuff with hand-eye coordination, cognition. But lastly, I do things. I always recommend different nutritional supplements to support energy production utilization with the mitochondria. I also do things to support the immune system because trying to rehab someone's brain when these people are chronically fatigued is like telling someone, Hey, all right, I'm your personal trainer. Let's work on you. You know, and you come in and you're just like, uh, I'm just, and there's like, man, even if I get stuff out of you, I'm going to get a fraction of what we truly could. And so I, do all of those. It's not just one or the other. It's coming at it from a whole picture. I love that. Would the approach be any different if it was more of a dementia case or a, you know, diabetes type three diabetes kind of case? Would you approach it any different or would it be the same kind of assessments to begin with? Yes. Yeah, the same assessments to begin with. Now the difference is whenever I'm looking at dementia is typically I'm always going to do what's called a neuroquant MRI. So neuroquant basically breaks down the brain. It says how big is each and every part of the brain? The more brain volume you have, more likely the resilience you're going to have. The other thing I like doing is brainwave testing with QEG because what you see is changes in the brainwave. So you've kind of got this resting rhythm. So if you imagine like your car's in park, there's a certain, right? It should be like 1.5, 2000 RPMs is its idling range. Well, with dementia, the idling range would come down from where it should be. And so those are things that we can measure as well to say what's happening, because the better that is, the more in sync it is, the healthier the brain is. So that's part of the different in evaluation. And then the other thing is I'm typically going to go much deeper into labs and everything else, because when we look at dementias, this is damage that has occurred to the brain for a prolonged period of time. It's not just your house caught on fire. It's your house's, unfortunately, by the time you get the diagnosis, which is why please don't wait till you get the diagnosis. Please don't. 90% of your house is burnt down. It's like having end-stage cancer. Catch it in the early phases in that mild cognitive impairment. There's so much that can be done. Don't wait for it to be so long that you've struggled because at that point in time, it's just hard. It's hard to do much. Yeah. So I presume a lot of in mid correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of your client base are local to you to get the MRIs and those kinds of things done. Yeah. So most of my patients are local and then I do have patients with concussions will fly in from other states okay. for an intensive time frame. 
Awesome. I love that. And if they aren't able to be near you, is there resources that people can go to to find someone that does the same kind of work near them? Yeah, there's, um, you've got the Diplomate of the American Board of Chiropractic Neurology is good. Carrick Institute has a list of providers, but, you know, search functional neurology, because if you've got brain issues, not all functional neurology providers are really trained in functional medicine know what their limits are because if you do have bad concussions bad dizziness cognitive impairment you need to be blending both sides and once again sometimes one provider can do both but other times you're gonna have to find people who can work together and they're not seeing each other as competition but they're seeing it as like okay how do we best help you and when you do that you're going to be set up for the best results Love that. Love that. So I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about your book and then you also have an ebook. So can you tell us a little bit about both of those? Yeah. So my book is Brain Reset, Seven Steps to a Healthier Brain. And it goes over all the foundational stuff that we said kind of at the beginning, because that I just had people traveling in from other states and I was like, all right, let's go back and talk about your diet. Let's go back. It's just all this stuff that is super profound super profound. Like if you think about an athlete or someone who's a high level, you know, um, musician, they never skip the fundamentals. And so if you already have the fundamentals down now, you get so much more. So that's part of it is to go through all those fundamentals. But then the other part is to really understand what goes wrong in a brain. Cause whether it's autism to concussion, to stroke, to MS, to dementias, the overlapping features are the same. The brain doesn't connect as well as it should, doesn't produce and use energy, it's inflamed, and then there's also often blood flow and oxygenation issues. And that's what it goes through in that, to really help you understand it. Because in the brain injury world, people want to understand. It's not just like, oh, well, I found this person, I'm going to go and see them. There's usually a lot of research goes into it. So that's the book. And then the ebook is Seven Symptoms of an Unhealthy Brain. So they're the symptoms that many of you are dealing with that we listed up front, forgetfulness, fatigue, depression, word finding that you've probably blamed on other things. And it's walks you through what those symptoms are, how to even tell the difference between when it may be from your brain versus when it's from something else. So for example, like your fatigue, if you have fatigue that worsens as the day goes on, it's much more likely to be brain versus, Hey, my fatigue's actually horrible in the morning, but then it gets better. You know, I mean, I've seen that happen with the brain, but that's not a common finding that you typically see. It's not the pattern. And so it really helps you dissect that. And then it talks about the different testing that you can do for brain health, but then it also talks about the labs. Cause really that's how you dissect it. Because if I didn't run labs and all I did was testing, guess what? I've had people, I would have treated them for their brain that probably wouldn't have got what they should have because in reality, they had anemia. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yep, fix your anemia. All your brain issues are good because that was sabotaging their metabolics. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a very comprehensive approach. And that sounds like a fantastic, both of those sound like fantastic resources for people to really learn more about this stuff and be prepared to then go to the practitioner and do the really detailed, difficult things that really you need the practitioner for. So I think that's fantastic. So if people want to learn more about you, how to connect with you, how to work with you, all the things, where should they go? Yep. You can go to my website, drspencerzimmerman.com or anything on social media, Dr. Spencer Zimmerman. I put out a lot of content because I want you to be empowered to know what questions to actually ask your provider. Because Mm -hmm. if they don't know how to answer them, you know, you're in the wrong place. Yes. Love that. Love that. Any final words you'd like to leave everybody with? Take a whole body approach. Don't become so attached to what you read online or what a friend tells you. Because what you don't know is why something was picked for them for care and not you. So don't try to force a provider to give you what someone else got that helped them, even though your symptoms may have looked the same because symptoms are up here. What's driving them is here. You've got to figure out what's driving that. 
And that's what's going to help you really get to where you want to be with the least amount of frustration. Yeah, I love that. I think I see that all the time in my practice where people are like, but my sister did XYZ diet and she got these amazing results and it's not working for me. And it's like, yeah, because you're not her. (laughs) So yeah, we need to get out of the box of assuming there's a one size fits all approach to every problem. There isn't. It's going to be unique to each person because we're all different. We all have different genetics and histories and medical needs and goals and all the things. And so, yeah, definitely take advice and tips from people, but be willing to do your own journey. Correct. I love that. So we will definitely link up all of your information in the show notes for people to just click and go so they can find you and get all your amazing resources. So thank you so much for sharing all of this amazing info. I'm, I know people learned a ton today about things they probably didn't even know and things they were blaming on other things. So <laughs> thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And to everyone out there, be well and vibrant. We'll catch you on future episodes.